Do not spoil what you have by desiring what you have not. Remember that what you now have was once among the things you only hoped for. When you hear the term hedonism, you may envision someone passed out on an overdose of pleasure. Drugs, alcohol, and anything that gives you a fleeting sense of bliss is typically considered to be the hedonist's greatest friend. Epicurus, who consumed all of the works of the far more boring Plato and Aristotle, was the man behind this theory of hedonism. Yes, like the modern conception of hedonism, Epicurus proposed that pleasure is the only worthy value. However, Epicurus believed in a specific form of pleasure that emerged from a simple life of pleasant conversation and good vibes. Ataraxia, or inner tranquility. So how can we achieve this simple life? Something not so great has happened in the last decade. You scroll through social media, click on an article about some sort of political figure you dislike doing something predictably bad, pretty soon your whole news feed is covered in articles about how terrible this person is. And then there's a close family member who kinda likes the same politician and clicks on an article talking about how great they are. Pretty soon their news feed is covered in articles discussing the genius of this leader. And then you both, with two entirely different views of reality, have Christmas dinner together. Thankfully, there is ground news to break the bubble. The world's first news comparison platform that empowers readers to see how sources with different perspectives cover the same story. Ground News is an app with two main features. For one, there's the News Blind Spot feature, which allows you to see the news that isn't being discussed by one side of the political spectrum. Secondly, there's the News Comparison feature, which helps you easily compare different sources that are covering the same story. It should be stated that Ground News is not a fact checker. Instead, it empowers you to come to your own informed decision by showing you all of the information available. This is thanks to the fact that Ground News has over 50,000 news outlets from across the world and across the political spectrum. And Ground News doesn't use predatory algorithms that take in your browsing history to determine which news articles you can see. For those who are tired of divisive media and want to see the other side, or would simply like to stay informed, Ground News is for you. The philosophy of Epicureanism provides an entire system of guidance concerned with living pleasantly. This is in contrast to many of the other philosophies of Epicurus' time that were concerned with finding objective truth and solving metaphysical puzzles. Here are three claims made by Epicurus that may provide some guidance in living the good life. Firstly, Epicureanism does not follow the idea that we should seek pleasure at all times. Scheduling your entire day around playing video games, eating sugary foods, and whatever else makes you happy is far from what Epicurus was getting at. Instead, the Epicurean is primarily concerned with reducing pain and reaching the aforementioned state of ataraxia. Everyday concerns and worries, such as relationship troubles, the sound your car makes, the economy, or a pile of dishes, all add up to create a foreboding amount of misery. Many think that if only they could get a vacation or win a lottery, they would be happy and escape these issues. But the Epicurean believes that the path of happiness is firstly achieved by alleviating these concerns, rather than pushing them aside in the pursuit of external goods. In other words, we need to confront suffering before we can pursue happiness. Thankfully, as Epicurus argues, much of our suffering is caused by what he called irrational fears, such as death and future issues. As he notes, we don't actually experience death, and it is inevitable, so this fear is somewhat unfounded. And as for the future, he believed that as long as we confront it with a certain confidence and acceptance of uncertainty, can we feel at peace. Another significant element of Epicureanism is that of friendship. As he states, of all the means to ensure happiness throughout the whole life, by far the most important is the acquisition of friends. It is not so much our friends' help that helps us, as the confident knowledge that they will help us. This is pretty self-evident. Most people's happiest moments are spent with others, as suggested by a study which tracked 286 Harvard students throughout 80 years. They discovered that close and meaningful relationships were a greater determining factor than money or fame. 
and was an even greater predictor of health than cholesterol levels. Epicurus himself would live a life in his pleasure garden amongst his closest friends in an attempt to live the most pleasant life possible. Although we probably can't design our own coastal Eden filled with lush fruits and tempered by the sounds of the Mediterranean, we can always strive to strengthen and maintain these friendships. One of the most important principles of Epicureanism that is simultaneously so cliche and nonetheless rarely followed these days is that of being happy with what you have. For Epicurus, desire is a form of suffering and hence a serious nemesis of happiness. Being independent of external things such as wealth, material goods, or rewards means turning your attention to the far more important things such as pleasant conversation with your friends and loved ones. As he specifies, by pleasure we mean the absence of pain in the body and trouble in the soul. It is not an unbroken succession of drinking bouts and revelry, not sexual lust, not the enjoyment of fish and other delicacies of a luxurious table that produces a pleasant life. It is rather sober reasoning, searching out the grounds of choice and avoidance, and banishing those beliefs that lead to the tumult of the soul. Overall, Epicureanism offers an entire system of simple truths that continue to be confirmed by modern happiness research. Lowering one's desire, valuing true friendship, and taking care of those nagging anxieties is really at the core of happiness for the Epicurean. Whether that means seeing a therapist or meditating, trying not to buy the latest clothes just because they're in fashion, or simply calling a friend, these practical baby steps aren't a bad start to the pursuit of living a simpler and hopefully happier life. <laughs>